Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Parker and we are joined this afternoon by Dr. Darcy Mulconry. Uh, she's the Chief of OB at Unity and our main topic we're focusing on today is pregnancy and the coronavirus. What are the impacts? Um, there may be some expected mothers out there with a lot of questions. We're going to try to get to many of those questions today. You can see we are practicing social distancing six feet apart here this morning. Make sure to leave any questions, comments on the Facebook live feed. We will circle back around to answer some of those questions. Dr. Mulconry, um, I want to start off with a lot of expectant mothers out there must have a lot of questions. I am not a mother, I am not pregnant, but I would assume that my biggest concern if I were would be the safety of my child. So what are the big, what is the biggest impact we're seeing at this point um, when it comes to being pregnant and COVID-19. Yeah, thanks, Joel. So we are receiving a lot of questions about, you know, how concerned should I be, mm -hmm. right? And um, understandably, patients are scared. You know? um, we are reassuring them for the most part in our office uh, and during their visits that from what we know, COVID-19 is not affecting uh, women who are pregnant or their babies more adversely uh, from the data that we have. Um, pregnant women uh, are considered an at-risk group, so sometimes there's some confusion around that message of, you know, we're not seeing that you're more adversely affected, but we're calling you a group that's at risk. And so it's really talking through, you know, what those definitions mean and why we're, we're giving them that information. ...the hospitals for visitors deliver or um, wanting to visit expectant mothers or maybe post-birth as well just as far as pregnancy is concerned and expectant mothers, what are those restrictions and exceptions? Right. So uh, on our maternity units right now, we are allowing one support person accompany um, our patients who are admitted um, during their delivery mm -hmm. or even for assessment um, in our triage centers. Um, so our data is limited and we're watching it as it comes in. Um, we're taking our guidance from the CDC, from the health department, from our Amer American College of OBGYNs. Um, and while our data is limited, we need to be cautious, right? And so limiting the potential for community exposure for our healthcare teams, for mm -hmm. our patients, um, means that we have to limit access to the floor and limit the number of visitors all the time being mindful of the fact that this is an important time in someone's life and it's important to have a support person. Um, so generally speaking throughout the hospital, with some exceptions, there are no visitors, but in, on the maternity units, you may have one support person with you. How important is it um, if an expectant mother is nearing birth to think about supplies, diapers, formula, any of those supplies? I know we've learned formula is not in the stores right now, but there is still a way expectant mothers can get a hold of it. Right, so the guidance is to prepare that you're going to have a newborn, so you're going to need the things that you would generally need uh, for a newborn at, newborn at home. Um, we are mindful that, yeah, it, it's scary when you head to the grocery stores and, and you don't see what you need on the shelves. Um, the formula companies in particular um, have reached out and are working with our pediatric uh, and women's healthcare colleagues um, to provide information on how to access formula. So some companies are letting patients directly order from their companies, either uh, via their websites or phone, and they are shipping, uh, direct shipping, limited supplies right to parents who are using formula. Okay, and I'm sure another big question is, can it be transmitted during pregnancy? All right, so from what we know, no. Um, the, um, we're receiving you know, case reports and we receive mm -hmm. these studies and we review them and um, look to our um, bodies of, um, that guide us that I mentioned, um, and what they can, from what we can see, there has been no transmission of COVID uh, during the birthing process or via the placenta um, while you are still pregnant. Um, and that's important for moms to hear, right? That's one of the most reassuring things we can tell them is that from what we can see so far, nobody is transmitting COVID to their babies um, at the time of delivery um, or during pregnancy. Reassuring for expectant mothers Absolutely. to hear that message. Uh, home birth. Is it mm -hmm. beneficial to consider it? Yeah, so we're hearing a little bit more about home birth um, because people are scared to access yeah. the hospital. Um, home birth is never a safer choice, mm -hmm. in my opinion, uh, as a means to deliver your baby. And in this situation, in this circumstance, it is still not a safer choice uh, to deliver at home. Okay. Um, pregnant versus non-pregnant women. Mm -hmm. Are there any differences there between someone who's pregnant 
getting coronavirus versus someone who right. isn't. So from what we can see, women who are getting coronavirus, again, limited numbers, are um, not becoming sicker. However, women who are pregnant uh, do tend to become more sick with some respiratory viruses like influenza or the SARS virus. And that's what's classifying them as at risk because we know they can behave differently when they're exposed to viruses. And so you know, our radar's up for that. But from what we've seen so far, women are doing fine. Any restrictions on any medications if someone is does have the flu or anything right. like so that? So actually, when women do have the flu in pregnancy, we treat them with Tamiflu. Mm -hmm. um, when you have symptoms of fever or other aches and pains, we generally recommend Tylenol. We always, I will always refer someone back, a woman back to her mm -hmm. provider because I don't, the medical histories could vary between patients. But um, yeah, generally speaking, Tylenol is safe and the flu would be treated the same way with Tamiflu. Okay. Yeah. And just for anyone who's just joining us again, we're talking with Dr. Marcy Mulconnery, um, Chief OB at Unity. Any questions you have, if you are an expectant mother, know an expectant mother in your life, feel free to leave them below and we'll answer any questions that we can. A small sample size so far, this is still new, still doing cases. Um, as far as pregnant women who are coming into the hospital, is there anything that has happened at this point to make you feel concerned that? Right. No, so we've been um, you know, hearing about this virus and preparing about this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how to react to this virus in our outpatient settings and at the hospital for weeks. Um, uh, and you know, so we will either remind our staff of you know, um, guidelines that are in place or create new guidelines if that's what's appropriate uh, at all of our hospitals and in our outpatient settings throughout Rochester Regional Health. If somebody's presenting with a symptom um, that could be consistent with uh, COVID, we immediately are taking precautions. So visitors are being screened at the door, mm -hmm. um, patients are being masked, and on our inpatient side, as far as the maternity units go, um, they're quickly isolated. All of our rooms are private, and so uh, we fortunately have the heads up most of the time when somebody's coming with symptoms. Um, but even if we don't, they're masked before they even reach our unit, and they're placed right into a private room. And you mentioned staffing. Has staffing changed at all? Right. So we're prepared that you know the um, number of people on our staff may be affected by the virus as healthcare workers are on the front line and may be exposed. Um, thus far, no. You know there is a safe staffing number that mm -hmm. we're always going to need to have to provide safe care to patients in labor, um, and we will meet that number. What's really nice um, about the community and what we are seeing as we look for you know positive aspects throughout our day is that. There are many offices in town um, that aren't seeing patients routinely, freeing up the time of uh, private you know, physicians, for example, private OBGYNs with offices who are reaching out to us to say, if and when you need the, the help, we are here, right? So that we will have nurses, uh, nurse practitioners, midwives, and physicians who are capable and willing to come and help us should that time come. Equipment wise, um how do the hospital stand at that point as far as having the necessary equipment that they need and also what does that look like inside the hospital mm -hmm. for anyone who might be coming into the delivery room doesn't know it might look a little different as far as everyone protecting themselves right so if you are feeling well and you are not a person who's mm -hmm. under investigation or sick with any sort of respiratory symptom and you're coming in to have your baby it very might it might look just the same as if we weren't in this you know setting of uh, covid um, so you don't really need to wear any additional protective gear and the staff won't be wearing any additional protective gear um, if you uh if a woman comes in and she's in labor and we are suspecting that she could have covid um, then there will be additional you know, PPE, as many people are becoming familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you, you will see healthcare providers who are seeing these patients with, um, with masks on, with face shields, with gowns and gloves. Um, and it's in order to keep everybody safe. So. Do you find that women are reluctant to receiving prenatal care at all? Right, I, I hope not. Um, women should be reassured that at Rochester Regional, we're doing everything we can to yeah. keep them safe. What's important to note is uh, across the city, uh, visits have been, you know, canceled if, if they are acute or unnecessary. So in women's health, um, any routine visits, any patients who are not pregnant who would be seeking care for a routine question or some education mm -hmm. are being postponed. Um, we are reaching out to those patients by phone 
We have launched telemedicine, so also a term that's becoming familiar in households, um, whereby one of our providers schedules an appointment by phone and reaches out and uh, calls folks. For pregnant women, um, because we have really limited the number of people coming into our offices, they don't, shouldn't expect to see other women really in the office while they're there. So to the best of our ability, we're spacing appointments when they check in and give room to there really is no one else that they will be sitting with. Um, and the majority of patients being seen are healthy patients. You mentioned telemedicine. What more can you tell us about telemedicine and what services it's providing right. uh, for so those women? We're doing a lot of education um, in prenatal, during prenatal care, especially in the beginning of pregnancy. Um, a lot of the visits are encompass a lot of you know question and answer mm -hmm. sessions really so patients are seeking information we're going through lab results um, talking about what they might expect in pregnancy and much of that can be done by phone uh, the um, telemedicine has kind of gotten up and going quickly right yeah. so we actually have schedules now uh, where we have a provider who is also staying at home just like we're asking other employers to do and making those phone calls from there um, we have many patients who are accessing us through my care or through their email that remains available and we always have providers on call as we usually would other services that an expectant mother might be used to going out of the house for birthing classes any recommendations mm -hmm. for how to go about that if it's being done online from this point yeah so our birthing time. classes have been canceled um, and we have uh, are in the process of launching an online birthing class okay. so patients who are seeking care at Rochester Regional Health will receive that information next week on how to access um, we also engage in a really neat patient education tool called uh, ME and so those videos go out to patients regardless of the COVID um, virus in the beginning of pregnancy. So just reminding them that that information also exists for them to access. And those are short videos that educate as well. Most common question that you're getting something um, that you feel is important to get across to um, those expectant mothers. Right. So what, uh, what advice we give them that's different than anybody else. And honestly, the advice we give to our pregnant moms right now is the same that we're giving to general community members. So social distancing is important. Do not go out of the home unless you need to. Um, can you work? Now, that's another question that we're fielding a lot is that should pregnant women come out of work? Um, the answer is you can work. Um, the recommendations that we're taking are the and making for folks are the same as that we would make for women who are not pregnant. In healthcare settings in particular, right? So there are a lot of pregnant patients who work in the healthcare setting. Mm -hmm. And to the best of our ability, the healthcare organizations will limit, you know, the exposure um, of a healthcare worker to a patient with COVID if she's pregnant. Um, but beyond that, the the recommendations are the same. Okay. Um, and just lastly, I know you gave a piece of advice right there. Um, I'm going to give you kind of one last final word if there's anything else that you wanted to get across to our viewers that we haven't mentioned at this point. I can urge all of our patients to have confidence in the team members at Rochester Regional because I am on the front line watching them all stack hands and do an amazing job in keeping our patients safe. Um, our healthcare um, team members um, are dedicated to keeping people safe and they are putting in every effort to do that. I'm proud to be working alongside them um, and you know I can honestly tell all of our patients that we will do uh, right by you in doing our best. Dr. McConnery, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, the entire staff at Rochester Regional Health really just working around the clock to give you all the information that you need uh, during these uncharted times as everyone is continuing to look through cases and we will have a link that you can go to our website for any additional questions regarding coronavirus, any of the specific topics. We will keep you informed as best as we can going through these times. I will talk to you soon.